Hi everyone, it's your fairy card maker Lisa here and in this video I'm showing you a mini album scrapbook that I made for a friend. This one is truly mini guys. It is made from business reply envelopes. Now business reply envelopes are not that durable so to make mine more durable I definitely seal them. I don't use them as pockets and I'll tell you what I use to line them. So all of the edges are lined and then in between the pages is ribbon. So between two envelopes is ribbon. So it's ribbon bound and then I hand stitched all of the signatures into this album with this beautiful um, metallic embroidery floss. So the trick with this album, and I'm going to show you a whole bunch of them that I made when I was experimenting with this, is this edging. A lot of people have used duct tape because duct tape is very durable, very hard to tear, um, but it is plastic. So to get stuff to adhere to it, you kind of have to sand it down a little bit to create a, a less slick surface to adhere things. And that's just a lot of work and it's not really that pretty. So I went looking for a cloth tape and being in Canada, the first thing that came up was hockey tape. So this is actually hockey tape. It is a cloth tape and I lined all of the envelopes with it. So it makes it nice and durable. And then between two envelopes are um, ribbon that I, I used for my binding and then I stitched through the ribbon into the book. So on the cover here, I'm not super big on cluster embellishments, but, and, and dimension. I don't use a lot of dimension in my albums because as you can see, it is already very full. I used only quarter inch gaps. So the only place that I can put bulk would be the cover. So I put a couple of giant roses here, die cut leaves, some rhinestones. I stenciled this heart on there using my Nouveau embellishment mousse and paint. So I used the platinum embellishment mousse plus Finnebar pink sparkly paint and then a die cut word and a die cut butterfly or dragonfly which is from Accutut Craft which I painted with the Finnebar sparkly paint and then I stamped all over it with Ranger archival ink and it kind of looks like tissue paper when you see it in real life it's really neat so because this album is so mini, it only holds smaller photos. So it's designed for wallet sized photos and there are two sizes of wallets. This one is the jumbo wallet, which is uh, one quarter of a five by seven standard photo. And this one is the regular wallet, which is one quarter of a four by six standard photo. However, it will fit in a few places, a four by three photo, which is half of a four by six. So if you have a photo printer that can print two up, on a four by six page, then you usually get two of the same photo. You just cut them in half when you get them and uh, use the second one as a spare or give it to family, um, whatever you want to do with it. I mean, prints are pretty cheap these days, so having extras is not a bad thing. All right, so my friend said she likes black with a pop of color. So I started with this and my pop of color was this metallic spine. But then as I started going, I had like this rainbow thing going on. So now it's a rainbow book. It kind of goes in rainbow order, black and a color that is part of the rainbow. So I started with purples and rainbow. So this is a deep pocket. Every pair of pages has a journaling spot so you can write your story. So typically right on the back and then put a picture on the front. Or you could write on the front of this one as well. If you're going to put a picture on a journaling spot, make sure you do your writing first and then put the picture because you don't want to have your picture on here right on the back and have your pen push through and dent the picture on the other side. This is a pretty deep pocket so you can actually slide more photos in here and just not attach them, just have them tucked in if you have more photos than you have room for. This one is just a place for a good photo. And then my exacto knife skills are not fantastic so my slit does not look as pretty as I would like it to. But this butterfly was cut with Craftex, and Craftex is a plant-based leather replacement. So it's pretty durable, and that allowed me to stitch through the butterfly because using it as a closing mechanism, if it were just paper and you know you keep doing this with it, it's gonna rip. So this is Craftex. You just slide the butterfly through the slit, and now you have room for more photos. So these ones are a pretty good size. 
and then you just slide the butterfly back through and close it down. Okay, so here's where I started with the purple. I went purple and pink. This is your journaling spot. You could write in the middle here if you really wanted to, maybe just the title of the events on this page or uh, just the year, whatever. And then writing on the back, I made a little tuck spot here. This one is made with white hockey tape, which is actually more of an ivory or a cream color, but that's so that these edges won't rip. And I made this embellishment with my postage stamp die and a stamp, one st flower stamp from Stampin' Up and a sentiment that I heat embossed with black. This page is just stuck down. It is literally just for your photo, and this is a place where you could put a bigger one. If you're using the mini wallets, you can actually fit two on a page in a landscape. The next page, I have a corner tuck with a foil papered heart. This is for your writing. You can put your photo in here. And on the other side, you can actually fit your photo up underneath here so that you can fit the bigger one. The next page, hmm, where is the journaling spot? I made a pocket. So first let me show you this side. You can fit your photo up under there so that you have a little bit of overlap. It looks pretty nice. You can fit your photo up underneath this tuck spot. Or you can just put one below it if you want. And then here is the pocket. Pull it out with a little enamel dot here. And it is a large tag in here, full size. You can fit the bigger photo on here. And then you're writing on the back. If you have a lot to write, you want to tell a story, you can actually write on this paper too and not put a photo and just make it a journaling page because it's a very, fairly subtle pattern. Next page. You can slide your photo underneath the stars here. It makes a nice um, decoration for your photo. This side, you fit a smaller one. And this is my favorite page of the whole book. Not only because it's my favorite color with these teals, but I made a slide block. So you take this butterfly, slide it over, and the belt opens. So this belt has ribbon here, again, so that frequently opening and closing it doesn't cause a tear. And then you can do the flip up. So you can fit a big photo here. And then this is your journaling tag. I love this paper. This is um, subtle enough that you could actually write behind here if you wanted to as well, if you had more to say, or you can stick a photo. You can also stick the photos down in this pocket. This is uh, another one of the butterflies with love from Lizzie peel off stickers here. I just like how it adds a little bit of opulence. Okay, so it slides together. To keep the page shut. All right, so we went from, what did I say? Purples and pinks, pink and yellow, yellow and green, green and blue, now we're into the blue. So this is still a little bit of the green, blue, and then blue. Here's a lovely fairy tag. My friend has three little girls, so I thought that they might like this. You can write on the back. You can even write some of the story around the fairy here. There's a nice deep pocket. So you can slide your photo in and not stick it down, just have it removable. Or you can stick a photo down if you want. And then on this side, you can get the photo up underneath this ribbon or place it below it. Okay, so that was blue, then we're back to blue, purple, and then it repeats. So this page, I don't know why, it makes me think of bedtime stories. Maybe because the way I did the separation on this page kind of looks like wainscoting in a kid's room or something, and you, here's your bedtime bear, but I stamped that bear and colored it with my Copic markers. So this is just a plain page. Again, you can fit a larger photo with the bear in the corner or you could fit smaller photos if you've got landscape. This is just a giant page, again, for the photo, but it's a flip up, and there's your journaling spot. So you can put a photo on this side, I think the smallest one, 
and then writing on the back. You could write here, you could write here, you could write here. I stamped all that pattern there. There was no, that's just a plain piece of paper. Put a little bit of sparkle on it. Fits a large photo. I colored this flower as well with my Copic markers. Okay, back to purple and pink. Tuck spot for your writing picture. Tuck down into the bottom here. So if you didn't want to affix your picture, you can stuff it into this pocket. This one is just paper, so it's a really thin piece of paper, so you got to be careful with that one. But you can fit the photo below it. You can fit it under it if you want the butterfly in the corner of your photo. Now pink and yellow. These are again, the these are glittered peel-offs, um, which are stickers. So this is stuck down just to frame your photo or landscape. And then this deep pocket here is nice because you can just stuff extra photos in without affixing them uh, if you have a lot. And I liked this paper, this house paper. This one spoke to me as like in the backyard or maybe at grandma and grandpa's house, that kind of thing. These hearts are a stencil that I stenciled on with texture paste that I colored with, uh, I think it was yellow mica powder. So this is a white texture paste that I colored yellow and it just matches that page perfectly. I used the same stencil on the tag. So since it's nice and faint, you could write on both sides of the tag, or you can just stick a picture on the tag. Back to the yellow green. I made another one of these uh, postage stamp type embellishments, a nice glitter tag here. Everybody likes a little shine, or at least I do. Kind of fits this jumbo wallet, but is really better for the small one. You can fit the small one in landscape if you want. And then your writing goes on the back. Again, always write first, add photo after. On this side, the dragonfly has a little corner open so that you can get your photo in behind it. And then the last page has a bottom tuck. So you put your photo in there so you don't on ones with this like bottom tuck, you don't actually have to stick your photo down. You can just rest them in there because this prevents them from falling out. And I put three little enamel dot hearts here because my friend has three daughters who all brighten her day. And then I did the nice big pocket on this one as well. So this is just a plain tag. It is kind of a shimmery paper. So you probably want to use a ballpoint pen on this one as opposed to a felt tip, unless you've got maybe a permanent Sharpie pen um, let me see, like this one, where they're really, really thin tipped. That would work, but you would have to let it dry to prevent it from smearing before you handle it. Or you know what, you could just put two big photos on this tag. And then the very back cover, I put another pocket, a nice big tag. This mirrored paper can fit photos on it. and then writing on the back. So that is the mini album that I made. This album is 20 pages because I have five signatures. And since I did not seal my envelope pairs, that's why you can see the stitching here. It is a little bit messy, but I thought the embroidery floss is so pretty that I didn't mind seeing it. But since I didn't seal these pairs, you actually end up with 20 pages instead of 10. So this album is pretty full, so don't go overboard with the photos until you see how fat the album is getting. And then it sits on the shelf beautifully. And I hope my friend likes it. 